Good morning. Let's worship our risen Savior.
Good morning, church. I'm so glad to welcome you this morning to this Sunday service. It's great to be in God's house and to be here to worship our risen Savior. I have a few announcements to share with you today. First of all, I'd like to give a happy anniversary shout out to Bill and Sue Wakelin, who celebrated their 50th anniversary this week. So congratulations and thank you for your witness of faithful love. I want to give you an update on what's been happening around the church this week in our mission to the community. We were able to, from the office, give out 14 bags of groceries this week and uh, Sue Remington told me that that's our normal monthly total. So we are definitely helping a lot of people through this difficult time. Also, our volunteers in the office took many calls inquiring about food, inquiring about Third Saturday. And for our Third Saturday this past week, uh, we were able to put together almost 50 bags of groceries to be given out in the community. Also, we were able to help with an emergency need for housing for someone who lost their job, and that was a blessing. And our mail call ministry served 14 guests this week with their mail and 17 received sack lunches. So I'd just like to say thank you to all the volunteers that are keeping these ministries going. We appreciate you so very much. Also, um, I had a phone call this week from Kelly Marks, who I had known from Orange City Elementary School. She was president of the PTA a couple years ago. And since we connected through Reading Pals, she called me and said that the Rotary Club wanted to give out free toilet paper and could they use our church as the site. So this coming Wednesday, April 22nd, from 4 to 7 p.m., there will be a free giveaway by the Rotary Club of toilet paper. If you need some, you can come down. There will be police directing traffic in and around the circle in our parking lot and that will be done in a safe manner so you don't need to get out of your car. So this is a wonderful way that we're seeing our community is coming together. And I thank you all for your generous gifts. We had 10 people who donated food or money this week through the church office, and you've all been so very generous to Martha's Cupboard. So thank you again for helping our mission to continue strong throughout this time. Now let's take a moment to pause and prepare our hearts for worship. Our first reading for this morning comes from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and has sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God had for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, kids. I want to invite you to a special time uh, that I want to spend with the children today. I was thinking about something fun that we used to do when we were children, and it has to do with a balloon, like from a birthday party or something. And of course, you don't want to play with balloons unless your parents give you permission and they're watching, so you'll be safe. But I was thinking about how we can't really see our breath, can we? And unless you're up in a very cold place, you can't see your breath. But in our story today, it says that Jesus breathed on his disciples. And he did that in order to give them an indication they were receiving God's spirit. Now, breath is invisible, isn't it? And wind is invisible. But there's power in it. Like you can't see thunder, but you can hear it. And I'm about to go in the house in a minute. But I want to show you something with this balloon as I put my breath into it. Look at it. It can't go anywhere, can it? But watch this. Now it's filled with air. It's filled with my breath. And watch. Did you see that? It actually traveled really fast. It was hard to even see it. And that's how it is for us. When Jesus gives us his breath, his spirit in us, it gives us power to do things we can't even imagine doing. That's his love for each one of us. So I hope today, even though you can't see Jesus, you'll feel him in your heart and know that his love and peace and presence are with you. God bless you. I miss seeing you all, but I hope you have a wonderful day. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for each of the families that are gathered with us today for worship and for each of the children. Help them to know your love and presence and power in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.
several weeks that are going to focus in on the resurrection appearances of Jesus and how they impact our lives. So our reading of the gospel this morning comes from the gospel of John chapter 20 beginning at verse 19. Prior to this time comes the familiar passage, the appearance of Jesus in the garden to Mary Magdalene who comes grieving 
and hears the Lord call her name and she sees that he's alive and he tells her to go and tell the others that he is risen. And now we hear what happens later in that evening of Resurrection Day. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me for a moment of prayer. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. May your words and your spirit sink deep into our hearts. And may we rise to serve you for Jesus' sake. Amen. When I was about five years old, a carnival came to the shopping center across the street from where we lived in Ohio. The Ferris wheel was visible from our front steps and we were all very excited to go there. So one Saturday morning, my father took myself and my sister who was a year older than me to go and have our very first ride on a Ferris wheel. Meanwhile, my mom watched from the front porch holding my baby sister, Linda. What a scary thrill it was to have the bar closed on our seat and feel the car going up and up. As it came over the top, it gave us quivers, but it was a kind of fear that was fun. With our dad sitting in the middle holding our hands, we were happy. Then all of a sudden, the ride came to a jolting halt. Our car was at the very top at a very scary height. Suddenly, I was no longer having fun. I was terrified. In fact, this is probably my earliest memory of what fear felt like. As the minutes stretched on, Dad put his arm around us and gave us reassuring words. I have to say, every now and then he rocked the car and we all screamed, but mostly he just had us in his arms. My mom was pacing nervously on the front porch and this went on for an hour while we heard clanging of workmen down below who we couldn't see. Everything was totally out of our control. Gradually in my dad's arms, I began to relax and let go of fear and look around and see the beautiful view from way up there, the houses and my mother down below. I felt safe because my father was with me. Well, as our scripture begins, we find the followers of Jesus are paralyzed. They're locked up in the house of fear. They're stuck. You know, they have real reasons to be afraid. They've been through terrible trauma and grief and experiencing the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And even though Mary Magdalene has seen the risen Lord and has no doubt come and told them the news, still their lives seem to be on hold, controlled by fear. As I looked through my scripture search this week, I found there were over 500 occurrences of fear in the Bible. Fear is a normal human emotion. Actually, it's a gift given for our protection. For example, imagine life with no fear. You're walking along and you see a lion coming your way and you just say, oh, cool. That is not good. That could be seriously harmful to your health. Healthy fear protects us and helps us to think and act wisely in dangerous situations. 
Most of us here today have a healthy fear of coronavirus, and it has led us to take positive steps to protect ourselves and to protect others. And that is good. But we also find in the Bible almost 80 passages where this phrase occurs, do not be afraid. While fears are real and prevalent, God does not want his children to live trapped and controlled by fear. So Jesus comes to them as they're locked away in fear and says, peace be with you. Not once, but twice. This is a phrase they've heard before. Remember the time they were terrified out in the boat in a storm and Jesus came walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost, but he said, peace be with you, don't be afraid. It is I. A number of times, angels have appeared to people in the story of Jesus' life. For example, do not be afraid, Mary, God is with you. And the angels speaking to the shepherds, <clears throat> do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. You see, God's presence brings peace and dispels fear. That's the first message of our scripture today. We have peace in his presence. But then after announcing peace to them, Jesus shows them his hands and his side. This seems to me the opposite of peace, looking at someone's wounds. But this is how they recognize him. This is how they see Jesus and begin to rejoice with great joy. He is their source of hope and peace, and it's revealed to them by his wounds. God's victory, God's power, God's love shows through his scars. I thought about how sometimes sharing our wounds and scars, our struggles, and God's victories in them can become a source of hope and peace for others. And I have to say for myself, I have struggled with fear at different times in my life, even recently. But God is victorious and we have peace in his presence. We also have power in the promises of Jesus. Think about it, before his death, he promised them that he would die, but after three days he would rise from the dead. And here he is fulfilling that promise. And also before his death, Jesus promised that he would send a special helper, the advocate, the Holy Spirit. Hear these words that Jesus spoke in his last gathering with his followers before he was arrested and killed from John chapter 14. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be with you. I've said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. These are the words of Jesus, the promise he gave to his disciples. And perhaps they're remembering it now as he says again to them, peace be with you. He has promised them this advocate, in Greek, parakletes, the helper, the advocate, the one who comes alongside you. He's the one who will teach them and live in them and help them remember all these promises of Jesus that hold such power for their lives. Peace be with you, he says, as the Father sent me, 
so I send you. And then he breathes on them. This seems very odd to us. Actually, it seems dangerous in this time of COVID-19, but he breathes on them. Think back to creation. God breathes into Adam the breath of life. And now Jesus breathes into them the pneuma, the breath of the Holy Spirit, this comforter, this advocate that he had promised them. They now can have new life because of the indwelling Spirit of God. This is their power to carry out his commission. As the Father sent me, so I send you. That was his power, and it's our power as well. For the disciples, it's time to break out of the house of fear and start living their journey of faith. But what exactly is the purpose for his people? This new life is not meant for fearful hiding, but for joyful service. Just as Jesus had given Mary Magdalene this charge to go out and share the good news, now he tells them, this is your responsibility to announce forgiveness of sins to all those who you encounter. This requires them to go out and tell the news of Jesus, his resurrection, his death on the cross, the only source of forgiveness for them and for the whole world. Jesus, the wounded one who died and rose again. If they don't leave the house of fear, the world will be left with their sins and hopelessness. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, they can go out, they will, and they did. That's how all of us have come to hear the saving news of Jesus Christ. So then, how are we to live in these days when we are all surrounded by so much fear, where you might feel trapped in fear, even paralyzed? First of all, pray. Pray and receive the peace of his presence. Perhaps you need to talk to someone as well. Fear is a real human emotion. It's nothing that we're meant to deny. Jesus recognized that in his followers. But in community, fear is more easily dispelled. Don't let fear become your focus, the focal point of your life. That should be Jesus. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be afraid. Do not give permission to fear to run your life, but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can and we must continue to say no to fear controlling our hearts and minds. And Jesus gives us the answer. Perfect love casts out fear. His perfect love within us helps us to dispel our fears. I know in my times of fear, I pray. I say it out loud. Perfect love casts out fear. I sing it. I dance it. I found a song that I really, really love. It's a little bit funny, but it's called The Breakup Song by Francesca Batticelli. And in it, she says, Fear, you don't own me. There's no room for you in my story. Fear, you will never be welcome here. I have found for myself that giving thanks and praise to God, being in his presence in worship, leaves no room for fear. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And this week I discovered another great verse, Hebrews 13, 6. And the writer of Hebrews states, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. There's something good for you to do when you begin to let fear into your heart. Just say it, say it out loud. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. When we turn our focus to Jesus and listen to his voice 
and see his wounds and remember that he has conquered the world. Fear flees, and we can then clearly see the mission that he has for us, the mission that he gave to his disciples that resurrection day. First of all, our mission is to share this word with others. Peace be with you. And I invite you to pray each day, each morning, and ask him to reveal to you who needs good news today? Who needs a phone call or a card? Who needs to hear a word of forgiveness? With whom do we need to mend something? Who needs a word of gratitude? If we get busy on his mission, fear doesn't stand a chance. And we can do all this. You can do all this from the safety of your own home. I'm not telling you to say, I'm not afraid of coronavirus and go out into the community. No, you can do his mission from right where you are. And you are staying safe and you are protecting other vulnerable people. Thanks be to God for that mission. Remember that we have peace in his presence. We have power in remembering his promises. And the Holy Spirit gives us a purpose for our lives, even in times like this. Well, I left little Janet at the top of the Ferris wheel, so you're probably wondering what happened. Maybe you feel right now like you're stuck in that scary place at the top of the Ferris wheel, wondering if it's ever going to move again, if you're ever going to get down to the solid ground that you once stood on. And I can assure you that you will, that it did. It finally came down. We were happy and joyful and we walked back to our home, giving thanks to God for bringing us through. And I would say to you, just keep holding on to the Father's hand and hear Jesus say, my peace be with you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are the Father whose hand is always secure, whose arm is around us, who protects and cares for us and loves us so deeply. We thank you that as we walk forward into this uncertain time, we can hold on to your hand and feel your peace. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we thought we would have our time of prayer in a kind of a peaceful place, uh, as that's been the central theme of the service today. And uh, I've been working on a new book related to Charles Wesley's hymns, and Charles Wesley created lyrical paraphrases of just about all the Psalms. Uh, and his paraphrase of Psalm 23, I think, is particularly appropriate for today. So that's going to really form our time of prayer together. So I invite you to join with me now in a time of prayer. Jesus the Good Shepherd is. Jesus died the sheep to save. He is mine and I am his. All I want in him I find. Life and health and rest and food, all the plenitude of God. Jesus loves and guards his own, me in verdant pastures feeds, makes me quietly lie down by the streams of comfort leads. Following him, where'er he goes, silent joy my heart o'erflows. He in sickness makes me whole, guides into the paths of peace, he revives my fainting soul, makes me glad and virtuous. Who for me concedes to die, loves me still, I know not why. Love divine shall still embrace, love shall keep me to the end. Surely all my happy days I shall in your temple spend. Till I to till your house, till I to your house remove, your eternal house 
above. We give you thanks today, O Lord, for the Good Shepherd, for that amazing human being, God person, Jesus Christ, and for the way in which he brings peace into our hearts and lives. Bless us all, O God, through these days, and help us to find your peace even in the midst of the whirlwind, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we come to the time in our service where we offer our gifts and our lives to God. I invite you to take your tithes and offerings and maybe place them on the table as we pray together. I want to give a word of thanks to all of you who have been so faithful and even extra generous in this time in giving to the work of our church and it is truly making it possible for us to continue reaching out into our community with the love of Jesus Christ. So I thank you all so, so much. Let's go now to this time as we hear some music that we will uh, quiet our hearts, quiet our minds, and give ourselves and our gifts to the Lord. I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God The still inside the storm The promise of the shore
Gracious God, we give you thanks for all our many blessings, and we offer these gifts now to you for the work of your kingdom and our lives to serve you as Jesus' followers, as his hands and feet today, for his sake. Amen. Everybody, my name is Susan Remington, and I am the lay leader here, and I'm a member of the staff parish committee. And because of that, I'm here to bring you an announcement this morning. It seems that this year we've had to deal with a great many changes in our lives. Some are easier to deal with than others. And as I come to you today, I have to tell you about one more. It is that time in the church calendar that pastoral changes are announced. After much thought and prayer, Pastor Janet has made the difficult decision to retire from active ministry. Her mother is getting older and her children are gifting her with grandchildren and she would like to spend more time with them. The last Sunday in June will be Pastor Janet's last Sunday with us and our new pastor will be arriving in time for the first Sunday in July. Announcement Sunday is next Sunday, April 26th and at that time, our new pastor will be announced. We have been extremely blessed to have Pastor Janet with us with all of her gifts and talents. We also had the additional blessing of having Paul with us as well. They will be moving closer to their family here in Florida and we want to thank you Pastor Janet for all of your time and all the many things that you have done. As they are called to different types of ministry and retirement, we want to wish them well. They will certainly be missed, but we are all on a journey. <clears throat> they will take a new fork in their road, and our new pastor will continue on his or her journey to bring new gifts and talents to share with us. And together, we will continue to grow on our faith journey. We want to wish everyone the best with these new changes. God bless. Thank you, Sue, for sharing that message with our congregation. I can only say to all of you that this has been a very, very difficult decision for me. Many months of prayer and searching have gone into this time. I have really felt uh, God's leading that I need to use this next season of my life to provide care for my mom and my family. So I pray that you'll all um, know how much I love you, how much I have appreciated all of your love and care and being in this community of faith has been a very wonderful experience. I know that God called me here for this particular time and I pray that you will continue to follow his mission and to welcome your new pastor when he or she comes just the way you welcomed me with so much love and care. And you will always be our church. You will always be in our hearts. We love you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for this season ahead, that you would continue to bless this congregation, that your mission would continue strong to be alive and well as a light for this community. And we thank you for all your good gifts and how you use each one of us to be a part of your kingdom mission. For Jesus' sake, amen.
Tell 